Well, welcome to this week's edition of the Don't Argue with the King of the Don't Argue. Don't worry about Dusty Martin in AFL circles. This <laughs> bloke was the King of the Don't Argue in the NRL ranks. That is for sure. Kurt Gidley, former Newcastle yeah, pump, superstar. Pumping my tyres up there, Matty. But up, mate. Just the old. Thanks, cool. mate. Don't argue if yeah. you don't want Hey, uh, listen, all thanks to Palmer Bed too, mate. And I must say, Palmer Bed have got you on the road again this week, Gids. You're at uh, uh, the thriving metropolis of uh, Coffs Harbour, big fella. Mate, beautiful Coffs Harbour, Matty. So, yeah, nice, always nice to be on the road and up to uh, up the north coast, mate. It hasn't turned on the weather at this stage, but up here for a couple of days, mate, which is um, always nice to be around the mid-north coast. So, on the road, mate, but... Um, Looking forward to having a chat about uh, last week's game and certainly getting close to the semis and uh, interesting sort of bottom eight of the table over the next few weeks. Oh, it's going to be brilliant, mate. I'm really looking forward to the final series. Uh, and, and last Thursday night, that contest between the Melbourne Storm and the Penrith Panthers, the Storm ended up winning 16 zip. It was a cracking game. I was on the edge of my seat all night, kids, to be honest. And, and you know, a few people starting to kind of ride off the Panthers and a few things like that. Things haven't gone their way. But, gee, they had plenty of opportunities. Don't worry. That result could have been a hell of a lot closer and if not different, totally. Yeah, you're right, Matty. Look, the, the Panthers are missing their two starting halfbacks and uh, half, half and five eight. Um, uh, I've, uh, sorry, Nathan Cleary and Jerome Lulawai. So yeah, there, there's a fair there's a fair disconnection there from from what they've trained and played with uh, all season. But certainly wouldn't be writing off the Panthers at this stage. And certainly, you know, we we spoke about the Storm getting past that Origin period and probably kicking another gear going into the semis. They've done it so many times before and. Craig Bellamy orchestrating uh, what uh, what he's done for so many times successfully over the years. So, uh, but certainly wouldn't be right in the Panthers up Panthers up at this stage. I, I did um, I did note a, a change there where Craig Bellamy had moved. Uh, who had he moved? He had moved a uh, Munster to fullback and Nick oh, Meaney. Um, so no, a bit of a switch there, which. It was huge. Like, you know, it was a big call, uh, you know, and Cam must have called it in the pregame. And, and I think the uh, the, yeah. players, the boys thought, hang on, is he uh, having a lend of us here? But uh, Munster's, a, 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 he's just a superstar, mate. He's just a competitor, isn't he? he he's just the bloke he's, one in the trenches. Yeah. He's as good as you'll get in the modern football game for mine. For sure, mate. I think the more times the ball is in his hands. I remember him coming through uh, in the Melbourne Storm team when Billy Slater was out during those origin periods. They'd throw him in a fullback and, again, Compete on every play, yeah. um, tough, resilient, skillful. Um, obviously, got a, a great work rate too. So, I think um, every time he's got more time, he's got his, the ball in his hands, and certainly at fullback. Just, I mean, it was my favourite position, just because the freedom of, you know, kick returns, uh, popping up dummy half, left side, right side. So, great, great freedom, freedom in full fullback, and it certainly suits his game. Yeah, and I think there's a bit of improvement still to come. You know, he was even the first to say it after the game, wasn't he? You know, I, I probably wasn't getting in the right spots and stuff like that, but it was just a cracking game of rugby. And I reckon it it probably really uh, epitomises what we're going to see over the next kind of five to six weeks, kids. Certainly is, Manny. Yeah, interesting uh, final few rounds with the, I guess, the teams competing for the top eight and who who can potentially drop out of those that uh, that ninth position. Well, what about uh, South Sydney Rabbitohs? Uh, they've been in really good form the last six or seven weeks. They demolished the Eels, 26 zip gids. Uh, and I must admit, I, I, I just cannot uh, confidently tip the Eels uh, from week to week. It's just, you just don't know which Eels are going to turn up, do you? No, nah, I don't think their fans know that. And probably the, the team doesn't know that at this stage. There's, there's always some question marks for the Eels, unfortunately, when they get to this stage of the year and the, the old wheels start to wobble a little bit, which is not ideal for, for team confidence and belief. You know, I listened to us, uh, some talk back radio in the morning, some sport related, and and geez, their uh, their fans get on the get on the blower and give them a give them a bit of a touch up. So they've just seen it too many times before, and as I said, it's not ideal when your team starts to uh, get a little bit wobbly three games out from the semis. It's not what they want to see. Mate, uh, such a sad week uh, for, for rugby league followers in general, wasn't it, with the passing of Paul Green, mate? And, and I asked you before we come on, did you have much to do with uh, with Greeny Gids? Oh, not really personally, Matt. You know, I'd met him like a lot of past players over the years. He crossed paths with different guys who, you know, used to grow up and watch. You know, he was he was uh, such a tough and skillful small guy who played the game with um, with plenty of heart and very, very intelligent, which I've, I've seen a lot of the his ex teammates come out to uh, to save it, mate. Just yeah, an absolutely devastating 
uh, event to unfold, on, unfortunately. And uh, just so many, so many unanswered questions, mate. And, you know, oh, man, I'm, I'm a strong advocate for mental fitness and mental health and well-being and, and, uh, and, you know, I just, I've seen some, some of my former teammates go through some challenging times and, and it's just so important to encourage, you know, conversation and putting your hand up if, uh, if you need. So, mate, I'm always there for a conversation. If anyone needs it, and I encourage it. Yeah, no, hundred percent, mate. And and you just, you know, it's just, it's just sad, isn't it? It's just a really sad situation, and you feel for everyone, um, you know. And, yeah. and obviously, it was a tough week, wasn't it, for the Cowboys uh, in general? They 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 had to take on the Roosters, who have been in pretty good nick, and and coming off the back of you know a pretty traumatizing couple of days, uh, you know. And I I take my my mind back to uh, to that first premiership you know like it was just magnificent uh with the cowboys winning it um one, one of the best uh things i reckon i've seen uh nrl wise yeah. and Jonathan thurston and that kick and it was just unbelievable wasn't it yeah unbelievable scenes that was for uh the current players there that were coached on the green you know i've seen jt speak for the first time uh on, on tv this week and obviously really emotional and still really raw and was you know was and still is very close to the family so yeah, my, my thoughts go out to everyone who who is um close to the family and um condolences. Yeah, no, nah, well said, mate. That is for sure. And as you said, Gids, your door, your ear, it's always there, mate. If anyone wants to reach out, hundred percent, have a yak. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting your hand up and uh, and saying things aren't going that well for me at the moment. That is for sure. Better to talk about it than uh, than do something uh, differently about it. So good on you, mate. You're an absolute superstar. Hey, uh, Raiders beat the Dragons, uh, Gids. Uh, controversial circumstance. It was nearly exactly the same as. Oh. Uh, as early on in the season, no, it was, it was virtually. Like- uh, I, I think I seen Anthony Griffin there after the game, his press conference, and he said it's ironic how the game unfolded and the result ended in in the end. Uh, it was basically the complete opposite of what happened. At, I think it was at Wynn Stadium, wasn't it? When uh, they deserved a penalty, the Raiders right at the end there, um, and I think it was Ben Hunt who was holding onto the ball, and time was called. Raiders, uh, Dragons won the game there, and then on this this um, this scenario. That uh, should have been. It was flipped around. So I mean, crazy the, the events that happened in the last dying seconds of, of both games. But uh, probably it's equaled out, mate. In uh, in the end of it. Well, and it keeps the Raiders' top eight chances alive, doesn't it, Gids? Uh, because if they had dropped it, uh, it could have been bye bye Raiders. Yeah, for sure. That's how tight that sort of bottom of the eight and just outside the eight is. I know the um, the Eagles just fell out last week when they. Loss, so Raiders still in it at this stage, but makes makes a, an interesting few weeks as we'll discuss in a second. Now, what about lease wins for twenty twenty two? All thanks to Palmer Bet. Uh, <laughs> you've got a title that you probably want, to be honest. But uh, the Tigers are currently on four wins. They're at a dollar forty. Their next three games got the Roosters, the Dragons, and the Raiders. Titans currently sitting on four wins as well. They're at three dollars twenty five. They got the Dragons, the Knights, and the Warriors. So probably got a pretty uh, well. They've got a winnable couple of games there on the way home. And the mm-hmm. Knights, uh, they're currently on six wins. They're at fifteen bucks. But they got the Raiders, the Titans, and the Sharks. Um, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Which way are you going here, kids? <laughs> it's a short way home. You couldn't have something on your Knights at fifteens, could you? Surely. Oh, geez, the the. Scrutiny and the controversy that uh, my my team and my club has had on them over the last two weeks with Dave Clemmer and then uh, Caelan and Kurtman this week and now a couple of players have been stood down uh, from playing this week. Unfortunately, Brad and Best and uh, Anari Tuali. So, mate, old Denny Videras, my good mate, who's uh, who's director of footy, he, he's he's his hair is falling out and turning grey <laughs> every every hour at the moment, but. I think it's the Tigers still at this stage. They're they're short. They're a dollar forty at this stage for for a reason. I don't think they're probably going to be a chance of winning any of those three games: Roosters, Dragons, Raiders. Uh, but mate, who knows? Like, look what the Titans did last week in in yeah. their win. Um, and you know, well, I don't know what the I don't know what the Knights are going to toss up in the next three games themselves. The Raiders are playing for everything they've got this week. The Titans could toss up anything, and then they play the Sharks final round. So. Uh, but my money would be on the Tigers, mate. Currently four wins. They could probably finish finish the year with, with no more. Yeah, well, the Titans are certainly... The Knights and the Warriors, you could nearly, I reckon, 
you know, you nearly locked them down or penciled them in as wins. So I think uh, you're right. I reckon it comes back to uh, to the Tigers, uh, that is for sure. So uh, interesting, Gids. Uh, and and you, never, you never know. The value might be your Knights, mate, because if they drop all three uh, oh. and a couple of the others win a couple, uh, all of a sudden they've gone ahead of them. So, listen, that gets us along to the yeah. next segment, your favourite segment, mate. And I hope you pack the old red pen, mate, with you. <laughs> there it is. Pack the pen, mate. There, there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, on off, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so listen, mate, we've put a line through the Tigers, the Titans, the Knights, the Warriors, the Bulldogs, the Dragons, the Sea Eagles. All that really leaves you, mate, is the Raiders or the Roosters, to be honest. Or you the Eels are Well, 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 mate. <laughs> the, it leaves me with three teams. I just done a, some quick calculations and let me just run yep. this through. Yep. At the moment. Raiders Raiders are currently minus thirty one points. Yep. Roosters are plus 121 points, so I'm pretty confident like they're going to make day. the top eight, and they're four and against is great. Yep. The Eels are only plus 28 points, Ooh. and they're only, you know, they're, they're two wins away from the Raiders at the moment. And the Raiders have got the Knights, the Seagulls, the Tigers, three teams that are below <laughs> them that are all genuine chances of this, beating. This and the match- Eels have... The Eels have got the Bulldogs, which is beatable, the Broncos who are above them, and Storm who are above them. Yeah. So there's a big circle around the Eels, mate, at the moment Come for on, me. Mate. Put a line through them. Put a line I, through I, them. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm predicting. Well, I'm predicting the Raiders, Roosters, maybe, and the Eels to all finish on 30 points, potentially. Yep. And. I'm going to write the Roosters out of there before they're for and against, and it's between the Raiders and the Eels for me at this stage of who's going to Come make on, it mate. into the top eight. Come on, mate. So, make, a hero. make a hero of yourself here, kids. Stick the neck. I know which way you want to go, mate. Oh, Just do it. Nah, I've got to go the Raiders. I've got to go the Even Raiders. Even the Raiders. Even yep, after that, just. You just- you just walked us through. You talked us through everything. Your reasoning, all that kind of stuff. You talked me into yeah. having to get on it. Now, look, it's it doesn't give me a, a heap of confidence, but I just I think the roster there in the Eels, I think they 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 have to get there. Surely they, right, they've mate. got if to I, get the top eight. If it was me, mate, and I'm going to have something this way because exactly what you said, it's that points difference. I reckon that's going to come down to because I reckon they'll lose the last couple of games, uh, and I reckon you're right. I reckon yeah. they'll end up on uh, on thirty points. Uh, I'm going to say that the Eels just miss out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. let's just make a note of that, mate. Let's just the Eels or the there. Raiders that last round. Put that red mark. The Eels, the Raiders, release, mate. But I've got it through the Raiders at this stage. Right, mate. Let's have a look Done. at round 23, Gids. All thanks to Palmer Bet, of course. And uh, Thursday night, 7.50, of course, stadium. It's the Rabbitohs taking on the Panthers. This is going to be an absolute belter. Head-to-head, the Rabbitohs $1.66. Panthers $2.23. At the line, the Rabbits minus $2.50, $1.90. Key stats, Panthers won their round four clash easy, 26 to 12 South have won six of their last seven games. They are in sensational form. The Panthers on the flip side have lost their last three. And South Alex Johnson has nine tries in his last five games, currently on top of the try scorer list with 25. He's six clear of second. Six clear. Wow. Which way? I must admit, the market's really surprised me here, Gids, because two or three weeks ago, the Panthers would have been odds on here. Yeah, they would have been. I remember early in the year there was some big questions about question marks about the the Rabbitohs at that stage. They were looking disjointed. Um, they were really struggling. But I tell you what, they've hit some form recently. Damian Cook, Cody Walker, Latrell Mitchell playing some great footy. Alex Johnson. I remember what a couple of years ago, maybe not even yeah. that. Alex Johnson was gone. They had to basically sign a petition to keep him. <laughs> um, and I just I seen a. Uh, a statement made by Latrell after the game, and, and he basically told the rest of the comp, "Look out for coming." And, uh, and mate, when he's making comments like that, uh, he'll live up to that, I believe. So, and that's um, that shows a fair bit of belief and confidence. So, I'm back in the rabbits, mate. In this one, head to head, and probably the difference for me is still clearing Luai being out. Yeah, yeah, right, eh? 
Uh, six clear, Alex Johnson on the uh, the try yeah. score. Yeah, that is phenomenal. Uh, he has had a magnificent season, that is for sure. Friday night double header. It's the Cowboys taking on the Warriors at Old Country Bank Stadium, head to head. Cowboys at dollar eleven. Warriors at six bucks at the line. The Cowboys minus nine and a half at dollar ninety. Uh, key stats, all thanks to Palmer Bet. The Warriors won their round five clash, twenty five to twenty four. Uh, it was an absolute cracker. Um, and when the Cowboys score, Gids, they win. They're averaging 31 points, yeah. 15 wins this season. Lowest scoring win being 18 points. So they're really good offensively. Um, what are your thoughts? They'll bounce back, I reckon, in a big way Friday night. Yeah, I mean, interesting to see the Warriors won the round five, class 25-24. It seems like a long time ago. Look, they've been on fire attack-wise, and, and that reflects it averaging 31 points when they win. Uh, so definitely on the cows this week. Had a bit of an upset week last week. Obviously, yeah, pretty emotional time for the yep. club. But certainly see them rebounding. Warriors had a good win last week. But they were also back in NZ. So uh, I think that certainly always gives them some inspiration. Uh, but I'm on the Cowboys this week. Yeah, right. Other Friday night doubleheader. Broncos v Storm. This at seven fifty-five at Suncorp Stadium. Head-to-head Broncos two forty-seven. Storm at a dollar fifty-five. Storm at the line minus four and a half at dollar ninety. Key stats: All thanks to Palmer Bet. Storm won their round fifteen clash pretty comfortably, thirty-two to twenty. They've won three in a row. The Storm Broncos have won two of their last four. Uh, Broncos winging it. Broncos wingers Corey Oates and Selwyn Cobo have combined for seven tries in their last four games. So they're pretty reliant on those two. I was impressed with the Storm, mate. I was impressed with Munster. Um, they're big forwards. I, I just thought they were, they look like the Storm that, that are really building, I reckon, now for a, a really good crack at it. Yep, yeah, agree, Matty. I think they're just starting to build some momentum going into the semis, mate, these last three games. Uh, and what they did with Munster and Meany last week. Game of the round for me, this one. I'll be certainly tuning in to see what uh, unfolds. But I thought Corey Oates and Selwyn Cobb over the difference there last week when they played the Knights, just their kick returns. They always look dangerous. And, uh, and just the, the momentum that those two guys uh, can bring to the start of their sets and also the finish of their sets as well uh, is outstanding. So uh, tight one, Reynolds could be the difference, but, mate, I'm on the I'm on the storm, mate, for this this game. Yeah, Good storm, momentum. Storm will get the job done, mate. Hey, Saturday, three PM. It's the Eels for the Bulldogs Combank Stadium. Head to head, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Uh, Eels a dollar thirty seven. Bulldogs at three dollars ten at the line. The Eels minus eight and a half at a dollar ninety. Key stats: Bulldogs won their round fourteen clash, thirty four to four. It was a thumping. Bulldogs have lost their last two games. Eels have won two of their last four. The Fox is flying. Josh Adokar has five tries in his last four games. This is a massive game for the Eels, isn't it, Gids? Oh, massive. Yeah, massive game for the Eels. They obviously a real real touch-up there last week, and that um, that's not ideal at this stage of the year. And certainly when you're when you're reviewing that video session, there's there's some question marks, and it's pretty ugly to watch, but I guess you've got to put it past you, draw a line in the sand and focus on this week. But I reckon that, that that previous loss they had against the Bulldogs is not that long ago, around 14. And that was a that was another another real touch up. Uh, yeah. so Bulldogs will be, be certainly confident. highlighting they'll be highlighting what they did well in that game and they played with enthusiasm yeah. and just played through them. So geez, it's hard to back the heels on this one, but I I'm gonna I'm gonna have to back them. Just purely, I'm looking for a reaction out of the Eels this week, but I'm not backing them confidently. You can't. You just don't know what side's going to come, do you? You know, like it's so frustrating being a Neil supporter, I reckon. Uh, you'd be absolutely uh, pulling your hair out each and every week, that is for sure. And, and the Bulldogs might be the value at 310. Um, yeah. You know. They're... Mate, I, I, you know what? I, they're gone. I'm going to the Bulldogs. I, I, I'm I going reckon, to the Bulldogs. I, actually, I, I reckon they're probably a, a really good, uh, better to price, aren't they? You know, like to, yeah, yep. Only because like it wasn't ideal the Bulldogs game last week against the Warriors, but I just think yeah. they'll you know this the refresh in their mind when they beat the Eels not long ago, and yep. the Eels are, are vulnerable. The Eels are really vulnerable at the moment. Nah, beautiful, mate. I love it. Sea Eagles taking on the Sharks, five thirty p.m. at Four Points Park. The uh, head-to-head odds, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Sea Eagles at three dollars fifty. The Sharks a dollar thirty-one. I love what the Sharks do, mate. The Sharks at the line minus ten yep. and a half at dollar ninety. Uh, key stats, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Sharks won their round seven clash, thirty-four to twenty-two. Sharks have won three straight. If they win it, they could lock themselves a spot in top four uh, calculations. They're currently sitting four points clear of uh, fifth spot south. So. 
they've got a fair bit to play for. And I just love they're just consistent. They just play the same kind of game every each and every week. You know the output, what you're going to get. And uh, they are getting the job done, aren't they, Gids? Yeah, they are. Another really convincing win there last week, although against the Tigers. But, yeah, playing some really good footy at the moment. Obviously, the coaching style of Craig Fitzgibbon, everyone's really buying into. They've got some great leaders. Seen some stats that Nico Hines has had a big year as a half this year. Loves running the footy. And, mate, all over the Sharks this week. Also, you know, Eagles are out of the running of the eight. And I just heard this week, I'm pretty sure Jake Trevojevic is out with a broken hand for the last three games. And, look, he's the heart and soul of, of the Seagulls team. And uh, he drives, you know, he drives some really high standards. And he's just always so passionate, Jake, when he's on camera, whether it's team huddles in the shed and post-game interviews. Now, I, I, love, I love the way he plays the game. Uh, he's a, just a passionate innovator. Sharks, mate, me. for me. Sharkies for you, yep. mate. You've been on them all year, let's be honest. And uh, they have Top not four, let mate. you down. Yep. Have not let you down. Hey, uh, Roosters yeah. taking on the Tigers. Saturday, SCG, Saturday night, 7.35 under lights. Head-to-head, Roosters, $1.07. Tigers at nine bucks. Uh, at the line, the Roosters minus, 20 and a half, dollar ninety. Key stats, all thanks to Palmerbet. The Roosters won their round five clash, 24 to 20, so close enough. Uh, the buyers, what they needed since their round 17 by the Roosters have won five straight, averaging 36 points a game. So they are in great nick at the moment. And Tigers have lost nine of their last 10 matches. That surprises me, to be honest, kids. Yeah, there was a little bit of hope and belief, I suppose, mate, there for them when I think they won back to get back games when they beat Parramatta there, maybe extra time. But yeah, look, the wheels have fallen off. A fair bit since then. Can't see them winning another game for me, to be to be honest. And she's that stat around Roosters have won their last five straight and averaging 36 points a game. So they're, again, just like one of the class teams. They're starting to hit their straps a bit like the Melbourne yeah. Storm as well. Yeah, you wouldn't want to play the Roosters in the finals, I reckon. Uh, just one of those. Two front rowers, they're two front rowers. Uh, Hargraves and who else was there last week? Matt Lodge. I think they both crossed for tries and Big meters even before half time, um, half half the game. So, yeah, the front rolls when they're laying a good platform, mate, makes it uh, makes it certainly a lot easier for the halves and outside backs. Yeah, absolutely, it does, mate. Uh, Dragons v the Titans Sunday, two p.m. Win Stadium, head to head. The Dragons a dollar fifty five. Titans at two dollars forty five. Dragons at the line minus four and a half a dollar ninety. Key stats here, all thanks to Palmer Bet Titans won their round 10 clash 20 to 16. Uh, Dragons all yeah, well. uh, all been out of the finals race with last week's loss to the Raiders. There's still a mathematical chance, as we touched on before, but uh, to be honest, uh, just up and down their season has been all year. Uh, I actually reckon uh, the Titans might be a little bit of value here, Gids, uh, looking for back to back victories. Yeah, geez, if you were Justin Holbrook, you'd be. Excited, but also scratching your head there last week about okay, how, how do we get that performance? Uh, yeah, you know, 15 rounds ago consistently. So, I just thought they played with plenty of energy last week, and it was led by AJ Brimson. Um, I think he was captain there last week and seemed to thrive and relish that uh, that leadership role. And I just thought he inspired his teammates and to a really convincing win. So, uh, look, they played well. Dragons, he's I don't know, they're, they're hit and miss, aren't they? Yeah, They're at Wynn Stadium. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if they've lost, you know, all complete um, hope of, of making the semis, but Titans come into it with some confidence. Can they put back-to-back performances together, which, you know, history happened. says they can't. Yeah. But, uh, look, I'm going to lean towards the Dragons. I like Dragons at Wynn Stadium. Yeah, righto, mate. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I reckon that's a toss of the coin for mine. I've just got that sneaky suspicion that the Titans might finish the season uh, on a on a positive note and uh, springboard them into next year. Hey, final game, Knights v Raiders, Sunday, 4.05, McDonald Jones Stadium. Head-to-head Knights, 3.10, Raiders, $1.37. Had the line, the Raiders, minus uh, $7.50, $1.90. Key stats, all thanks to Palmer Bet. Raiders won their round 15, clash 20-18. to 18. It was a tight game. Uh, close games. Only three of the 11 wins from the Raiders have been 13 plus. Oddly enough, two of the three against the Sharks and South Sydney. Um, Knights have lost mm. five of their last six. So interesting stats there. But I must admit, Gids, looking at this, uh, and you're going to hate me saying it, I reckon the more you put on the Raiders, the more you're going to get back, mate. Gamble responsibly, of course. But uh, I just think the Raiders are an absolute special here, mate. Um. 
Yeah, mate, they probably are, to be honest. They've got uh, you know, a heap to play for. They've got more to play for than the Knights, obviously trying to make the top eight. Uh, mate, the Knights had an opportunity to beat the Raiders there only a number of weeks ago. They, they blew it, basically, end yeah. of the game. I think the Raiders, the Raiders won in the last set of the game off a kick by a back rower and scored. So Knights should have, could have won that game. But, uh, mate, the only thing the Knights potentially to play for this week, voice for mining around, um, which mining industry has had a big influence on uh, the Hunter Valley and, and the people of Newcastle, and it's always a big round to represent the people who still work in, in the mining yeah. sector. And look, a lot of our ex-players and ex-teammates, our old boys work in mining, and I know if they show some of the toughness and resilience of the blokes like Billy Peden and Steve Simpson, uh, with, you know, a couple of premiership players, then yeah. will be a chance. But for me, unfortunately, it, it's tough to say, but there's just been too, too much... Uh, negative, controversial moments over the last three weeks for the club, and it's it's really really tough to see. Um, there must be players need to find something this week. Yeah, they're just they're at an interesting spot, aren't they? Uh, your Knights, mate. It's just uh, you know it's it's going to be a, a bit of a wasted season, to be honest. And 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 where to? You know, where's the excitement coming from, Gids? Do you reckon for next year? Uh, mate, good question. Good question. And there's got to be a bit of soul searching to be done. Uh, with the with the players, and we need some we need some leadership. We need some leadership in the in the current squad. I mean, I love Adam O'Brien. I, I would pull the boots on for him tomorrow and play for him because I've been part of his team meetings, and I I know yep. what he's he lives for and his beliefs are and what his character is. Denny Bedaris, great man, legend of the club, such a tough and resilient player, and you know, recent addition Peter Parr um, to the club brings some great experience as well. So you know players need to take some responsibility here and there needs to be some leadership and uh, they need to drive the standards. Yeah, no, nah, well said, mate. Hey, listen, what's your best bet and your best value for the weekend, kids? All thanks to Palmer. Bet. Hey, you got a multi I, or something for us, mate? What are you doing? Yeah, man, I didn't. I looked at a couple of multis, but didn't. nothing jumped out of me. I did look at the, I think the Rabbitohs after Latrell's statement there from last week, I think they can beat the Panthers convincingly. Um Right. At the core stadium, yep. I like the way they played last week, smashed the Eels and the troll statement after the game. I think they can beat win 13 plus, which is paying 330. Big wow. call against the Panthers, but I think it can be done. Yeah, right. And they're in great nick at the moment. So uh, they've been six out of their last seven. So that is your best bet, mate. What about any value? You got some value for us? Mate, I looked at a little bit of value for the Brisbane-Melbourne game. And again, I like like what Melbourne's uh, the momentum they're building at the moment. I'm going for a little. I mentioned this one the other week. Half time, full time. Yeah, yep. um, I'm going to go half time Brisbane because it is in Brisbane, and I think Adam Reynolds could take yep. the the Bronx to half time. But I think the uh, the momentum and the resilience that Melbourne have, they could uh, win the game overall. So good value, seven fifty. Right, mate. So Broncos to be leading at half time, storm to run over the top and get the job done. And your keen as mustard on South defeating Panthers 13 plus. I love it, kids. Absolutely Thanks, magnificent. Mate. Gamble responsibly. That is the key message. All thanks to these guys at Palmer Bet. Download the app, get involved, but do it in a responsible manner. Uh, there's plenty of stuff in there. They love their rugby league, uh, do the uh, the boys from Palmer Bet. And did you catch any of the darts kids? They're uh, right involved in the uh, the Queensland Open, mate, with uh, with the darts last weekend. It was sensational to watch. Great, mate. What a what a spectacle. What a sport. I tell you what, she's she's big in the UK, mate. I didn't actually get along to one live, but it, you know. Oh. Uh, it looks like a fair old atmosphere. Maybe we can create that type of atmosphere mate. for the darts in Australia. Honestly, I went She's to pretty one loose. In, uh, I went to one in Melbourne about uh, six or seven years ago, I reckon now, Gids, and uh, it was at Marvel Stadium and uh, one of the best nights <laughs> I've had. Seriously, it was absolutely on like Donkey Kong. It was fantastic. Um, darts so, at Marvel Stadium, hey? Darts at oh, Marvel. Really? It was unbelievable. The wow. chairs were going everywhere, mate. It was just, uh, it was atmosphere <laughs> personified. I love the atmosphere. And um, great to see the team at Palmer Beck getting involved too. It is absolutely magnificent. They love all sports. And uh, NRL is one of them. Gids, you have a wonderful week, mate. And I look forward to talking to you next week. And I'll tell you what, we're not too far away from a magnificent final series for 2022. Mate, 100%. All the best, everyone. Thanks, buddy.